Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, my name is Tori and today I'm going to be doing the first time book tag. So this tag was originally created by April from Getting Hugo With It and I was tagged in this by Nakia from Nakia's Hideaway, whose channel I absolutely love. She reads a lot of thriller, a lot of science fiction, and her personality is so vibrant. I always come away from her videos like smiling. She's so enthusiastic about the books that she loves and she will not hesitate to tell you when a book was terrible. So I think she is definitely worth checking out, subscribing, and I think you'll really enjoy her channel as much as I do. So this tag is kind of like memory lane and talking about your first experience with you know different books so there are eight questions here i have them on my laptop over here so i'm going to be looking back and forth probably for each question but yeah this should be a really fun tag so let's get into the video So the first question is sorry not sorry the first book that you could not stop gushing about so i've gushed about so many books on my channel over the years and i'm going with this one because this is not only a book that i gushed about on my channel and Instagram and everything I this is one that like crossed over into like my everyday life and I was making people read this book I needed everybody to know about this and that was lexicon by Max Berry some of you already know this this is one of my all-time favorite books it's like a blend of so many different genres there's so much happening in here and I have this very very short list of some of the most unique books I've ever read whether it's for their structure or for the actual content of the book and lexicon is somewhere on that list. I have yet to read a book quite like this one. We're actually following two storylines, but our main character is this girl who has pretty much raised herself on the streets of San Francisco. She is a hustler doing what she can just to survive to her next meal. And one of the big things that she does is she hustles people out of their money playing cards. Eventually her hustle gets the attention of these like really shady recruiters from this school on the east coast and our main character accepts the offer to go to this school and when she gets there she finds out the students are learning how to use language as a weapon like a, an actual weapon people are using language for manipulation reasons using language to try to kill people i mean it is just it is so it is so wild and in our other storyline, which I am not going to get into at all because I feel like we can start getting into spoiler territory, he is being pursued by some very mysterious people. And I'll leave it at that. But if you have not read Lexicon yet, please go do that. Question two is thank you next. The first book you wish you had DNF'd. So for this one, I have two answers because I couldn't choose between them. The first one was easy. Hands down, I wish I had DNF World War Z by Max Brooks. I dislike this book so much. I'm so much more comfortable now DNFing books. I will DNF a book now without any hesitation. If I'm not enjoying it by a certain page, I will just, I'll close the book and put it down. But back then when I read World War Z, I wasn't, you know, that's just not the kind of reader that I was. I felt like I had to finish everything that I started. <laughs> I struggled, I struggled through that book uh, so hard. I'll never forget my entire reading experience with World War Z. I remember my mom and i were going on a road trip together we were so from chicago down to dallas to visit my cousin and for this road trip and then the stay in dallas and then back up home i i was prepared i had a stack of books with me i was like i'm gonna read this half in the car on the way down some of these at my cousin's house and then i have other books to read on the way back up and by the time we were getting ready to leave to come back home world war z was the only book that whole stack that I uh, that I brought that I had not read yet and that was the only book that I had on that 14 hour car ride. I was almost in tears that I was stuck with that book. I was like this is terrible. It's funny now but back then I just did not have this concept of DNFing the way that I do now so. And the next book that I wish I had DNFed this one is more like in hindsight because when I was reading this book I wasn't you know I wasn't feeling any sort of way towards it I wasn't hating it but I wasn't loving it either I was just like this is fine whatever but by the time I finished it I was thinking yeah I probably should have put that down and that's The Martian by Andy Weir. I do not like The Martian at all. Unpopular opinion to me The Martian is one of the rare rare examples of a movie being better than its book. I feel like it's definitely one of those things where it's like it's not you it's me but I fully recognize that it's it's definitely me. I don't like this might sound kind of dark. I don't like humor in my books. I don't like funny characters. I don't like comic relief characters. I don't like a 
I don't like humorous prose. It, that is one of my biggest turnoffs in reading and it's honestly the fastest way that I will put down a book. It's one thing if a book is not trying to be funny or a character is not trying to be funny and something just naturally funny happens that's one thing but characters who are written to be comical or sarcastic or jokey or prose that is a little bit snarky I just I can't I can't get into it. In a lot of ways that just kind of ruins the whole reading experience for me and that is 100% what happened with The Martian. It's a good story. I can recognize that. I was really invested in the fact that he's alone on Mars trying to survive and get out of the situation but the humor in the book just really it didn't do it for me so. Number three is Working Wonders. The first book that helped you through something hard in your life. When I first saw this question I was thinking you know I don't really think I have an answer for that. I've always been a big reader. I read through I tend to read through difficult times or anxious times when I'm stressed so if I'm reading a book during those times I'm usually not recognizing that this is the book that's helping me through a particularly challenging moment and so that was going to be my original answer however when I stopped and thought about this a little bit more the great books that I read in 2020 all of those were books that got me through something difficult because 20, I know 2020 was a challenge for all of us we're still feeling the effects of that right now that was a hard year and mentally in 2020 I've never talked about this before mentally in 2020 I was just in a place where I've never been mentally before and that was a lot for me to deal with it was getting extremely difficult for me just to do like basic tasks there were so many days in 2020 where I was just like I don't want to move today and I would seriously just be like up on the couch or in the bed literally all day long reading or listening to an audiobook and that was that was 2020. So really all of the books that made my best books of 2020 list, I'm blanking on a few of them right now, but The Poppy War, Parable of the Sower, Jade City, To Be Taught at Fortune, and House of Earth and Blood, The City We Became, The City of Brass, The Passage, and then some that didn't make my list like The Girl with All the Gifts, Annihilation, The Unspoken Name, uh, The Fires of Vengeance. Those books really got me through 2020. I was really able to just throw myself into those stories and quite literally escape. So question four is don't turn out the lights. The first book that gave you chills. Um, so for this one, I had to go back a little bit for this one. It took me a minute. I was like, I don't know. I don't read a lot of books that give me chills. But then my mind instantly went to <laughs> Stephen King. I went through a very <laughs> random Stephen King phase while I was in high school. And so for those four years, I went through about four of his novels, four or five. And then, you know, many, many years later, I finally picked up a couple of his short story collections. So he's definitely given me chills but the one that comes to mind by him it's actually he wrote it under a different name but it's still Stephen King. Um, he wrote The Long Walk and I I don't know I will never forget this book. That's definitely one of the first things that I can remember that gave me chills. I read that I had to be like maybe a sophomore in high school when I read that maybe a freshman in high school around that time. It's a dystopian novel and the premise itself isn't you know enough to give you chills but just the whole atmosphere of it and just the way the things escalate in the book kind of gave me chills. The whole premise of the story is that every year this large group of boys they have to just walk. They have to walk, they have to keep a certain pace while they walk and they can't fall below the pace that is set otherwise they'll be murdered and whoever is the last boy standing at the end will you know he won't die so that's pretty much the prize and you know the boys some of them they became friends while they were walking down this road and just getting to know each other and when you're reading that they're starting to slow down you just get like kind of hairs on the back of your neck like oh no like speed up that whole book was just a little nuts so that's probably the first thing I can recall that gave me chills number five is can I get my time back please the first book that made you angry so this one I don't think I've ever maybe on Instagram I have but I've never talked about my least favorite book of all time I have a very short list of just books that I absolutely dislike Wuthering Heights is on that list extremely loud and incredibly close is on that list but this book right here I can't even go on about it for too long because it genuinely does make me angry I this is my least favorite book of all time it's The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides that's all I'm gonna say. That is all I'm gonna say about that. I really, really cannot stand that book. So number six is Out of Comfort Zone. The first book that made you fall in love with a genre you had never really experienced before. So this one also took some thinking about, but I landed on The Big Book of Exit Strategies by Jamal May. And this is a poetry collection. So, I mean, I grew up reading Maya Angelou, 
like that was just kind of standard. When I say I'm not into poetry, I'm not including Maya Angelou in that. But poetry, Jamal May's poetry just kind of opened me up to, you know, being more receptive to reading poetry and enjoying poetry. So the big book of Exit Strategies is his first poetry collection and his second is Hum, which I also really enjoy, but Exit Strategies is phenomenal. I would love for everybody to go out and read that. It is such an incredible poetry collection. Um, and just from reading Jamal May's poetry collection, that is just made me eager to check out even more poetry collections. Since then I've read The Tradition by Jericho Brown. I've read Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith and I've just I've really enjoyed both of those. So I am definitely open to you know reading more poetry now and, and I feel like after reading a lot of Maya Angelou's poems as a child and in my teenage years I feel like now I'm in a good place finding more contemporary poets who are just doing some really unique and great things with the genre. So I do enjoy a good poetry collection every now and then. I definitely owe that to Jamal May's first collection. So question seven is Mirror Image. The first book that made you feel known. So the first book that I can recall, stay with me on this one, the first one that I can recall, and this is in terms of the setting and the situation, not the characters themselves or the crimes they committed. I'm gonna have to go with The Secret History by Donna Tartt. If you guys are unfamiliar, we are following this character who comes from the West Coast. I mean, I'm from the Midwest, but he comes from the West Coast and he attends this small, prestigious liberal arts college, isolated in New England. And he falls in with this very small group of classic students. And so I'll just never forget reading that book and being like this, <laughs> this situation, these classes, the, the feeling of being on this campus is just almost a little too specific because I was also a classics major in college and also had a very small group of classics friends and classrooms that were like five people. And, and I also went to a very small liberal arts college tucked away on the East Coast. That's, so that was a lot. And so aside from, again, the crimes that these group of students committed and just the how extreme they all were, uh, the setting and the premise felt a little too close <laughs> to my actual experience. So that was a little unnerving. Last question is, hop aboard the Wayback Machine. What's the first book you reviewed on booktube? And I had to go look this up. I was like, I have no idea. It was The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. It was my third video on my channel and I didn't like that book. <laughs> so I just needed to kind of rant about it. That was my first ever review and I have not read anything by Paula Hawkins since. So that's it for me, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments some of your answers to these questions and I'm gonna tag some people down below. But if I don't tag you, just feel, you know, feel free to do it. Tags are for everybody. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.